This video is sponsored by Squarespace. For this video I went online and bought the cheapest interchangeable lens camera available that day. And it so happens that it was the first model I ever bought back in 2003. So almost 20 years old. Is it still usable today? You have often heard me say, and in several videos seen me prove, that gear simply doesn't matter. If you use a modern super camera like the EOS R5 or a cheap classic like the original 5D is irrelevant. What matters is that you know how to use them and in the long run that you enjoy using them. So the point of this video has already been made. I won't say anything you haven't heard me say before. But people still contact me asking about what camera to buy and when I suggest to buy a cheap T3i D700 or whatever they reply that they can't find one locally. So I will once again try to make the point as clear as I can. It doesn't matter. If you can't find the particular camera I'm recommending, buy the one that you can find. Because this camera is almost 20 years old, it's the oldest amateur camera Canon ever made, so it's in fact Canon's worst attempt ever at a camera. And it's still more than good enough to create nice looking images. So try not to get hung up on this specific model. It's just an example of an old DSLR and given the age it can only get better from here. Back in 2003 the Canon 300D cost me almost a thousand dollars. This one was 40 with a CF card included. But I've seen them for around 30 used in a store with a couple of weeks warranty and plenty have been sold around those figures on eBay lately. What you get is a surprisingly light and comfortable camera. It's plastic, but it still feels decent. The grip is excellent. The tape is to protect my hands from the 20 year old fake rubber that started to smear. It only has one control dial, but you will get by. I've mostly been switching between aperture priority and shutter priority. You can control the exposure compensation with the same dial while pressing a button. Being the first amateur camera from Canon it has a built-in flash. But unlike later amateur cameras across most brands, it has a separate door for the CF card and the battery. Third part batteries are super cheap and easy to find and being a DSLR they last forever. It does not have live view, but that's sort of a given on old cameras. The viewfinder is far from the worst I've used. Modern spec mambo jumbo like ISO and numbers of focus points won't compare to today. But if you like me, shoot 99% using the center point, it doesn't matter. And in fact, old DSLRs are faster and more accurate than way more modern mirrorless cameras. That's why DSLRs still dominate among professional sports shooters. And as you can see in my sample, I really tried to stress the focus by shooting a lot into the sun without a lens hood. Shots that pretty decent mid-range mirrorless would struggle with. Regarding ISO it's not really an issue, you still have way more flexibility than film shooters had for a hundred years and they were still happy. The image quality is nice, the low 6.3 megapixel CMOS sensor contributes to deep and rich colors. As you know I don't really like the protect the highlights trend all that much, I like blowing them out. But with that said there is a lot of dynamic range there, in the shadows as well. 
Not like a Nikon DF or similar, but enough to get by. So, what's the catch with an old camera like this? Well, none really, if you use it within its strength. You can shoot sports, but if you get paid to do that, then obviously you can use something faster. The buffer takes a long time, so plan ahead. Reviewing shots when shooting raw is also a time waster. And if you need video, then you need another camera. And I know someone's already started typing a comment about the lenses being expensive, which of course isn't true. There are so many affordable DSLR lenses out there for next to nothing on the used market. Especially APS-C lenses from Tamron and Sigma. My advice is to always start with a 50mm. The classic 51.8 from Canon can be had for 25 bucks all day long. So, do I recommend this camera? No, didn't you hear the beginning? It doesn't matter. I'm not recommending this specific camera. I'm recommending buying a cheap old camera instead of the latest and greatest. Because it will save you money and help the environment without limiting your photography. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you are a creator looking to grow your audience, then a website should be your first move. Squarespace is a popular and powerful platform that makes setting it up super easy using their templates and professional portfolio designs, which of course are customizable. You can also include a booking schedule, making it easier for you and your clients to connect you also get access to Squarespace email campaigns, so you can engage with your audience in a consistent and effective way. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Matthias to save 10% of your first purchase on a website or domain.